Hi, Python trainer Ruven Lerner here. And in this video, I want to go through a process that many of my students have to deal with at the beginning of my corporate training classes. Um, I typically don't use slides when doing corporate training. Rather, just as I do in all these videos and in my online courses, I use the Jupyter Notebook. I do live coding, typing as I'm talking. And I find that this is more interesting, interactive, allows me to uh, express my ideas more obviously and also show my students not just the results, not just the code they should write, but the process I use to get to that code. Um, and then also at the end of the day, after I'm done with my training, I can share the Jupyter Notebook that I created with my students. So all around a great thing. There's just one problem, which is installing Jupyter is not at all obvious, especially if you are new to Python. So I want to give you a quick run through of how to install Jupyter. And the first thing we have to do, and I'm going to be on the command line for almost all of this, and I'm on a Mac. Uh, Mac and Linux are both Unix type systems, so they're going to be very similar in many ways. Um, if you're on Windows, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm not really sorry. No, no, no. If you're on Windows, you'll have to open the CMD uh, command line. I know it's unusual to have to do that in Windows, but you're really going to have to do that at least a little bit when you're working with Python. Um, so the first thing we want to do is make sure Python is installed and that we have a recent version of it. And the way I can do that is at the command line typing Python minus minus version. And when I do this, you see it says Python 2717. Now I'm recording this at the end of August 2020. Um, more than eight months ago, Python 2 was deprecated. That is to say, you're not supposed to be using Python 2 anymore. Why is it still on my computer? Because Apple, like many, many companies, uh, has uh, a lot invested in using Python 2 and simply ripping it out in favor of Python 3 is not that reasonable. Um, in fact, many of my corporate training clients, they still use Python 2 in their day-to-day -day work. We're slowly but surely moving them to Python 3, but it's a long, complicated process. So if you type Python minus minus version and you see Python 2, you want to make sure that Python 3 is installed on your system. Now, my particular computer, I have installed it, and it is called Python 3. And if I say Python 3 minus minus version, you'll see it's Python 3.8.5. As of this writing, 3.8 is the latest stable version, 3.8.5, the latest minor version to be upgraded. As long as you're in 3.7, 3.8, maybe even 3.6, you are certainly going to be doing fine, at least as of this writing. That said, uh, you should really try to make sure that you have a recent version. And you can always go to python.org. You go to the website there. In fact, I'll just go here in my browser. But if you go to python.org, you will see then you can download Python free of charge. And if I say here, I want to download it, it'll guess that I want to do it for the Mac because I'm on a Mac. Uh, good guess, good guess. Um, and you can always download other versions as well. So you want to have Python 3 installed and you want to be able to type Python 3 at the command line. Why? Because in order to install Jupyter, you're going to need to have a working version of Python and a working version of pip. Pip is the Python installer for packages. And it goes to what's known as pypi.org, the Python package archive, Python package index, sorry. And it finds things and downloads them and installs them much more easily and better than we can do ourselves manually. So in order to run that, I'm going to say pip3 install Jupyter. But you know what? I have become convinced more and more that this is not a good way to do it. And the reason is that you want to make sure that pip is being installed with the version of Python that you have installed and that's ready and working. So I'm instead going to say Python 3. Again, if your version of Python 3 is called just Python, don't say Python 3, say Python. But if your version of Python 3 is called Python 3, use Python 3. Confused? I know, it's confusing. So I'm going to say Python 3 minus m pip. And what that does is basically say, let's run Python 3, let's load import, this is short for import, import the pip module, and then you can use whatever pip commands you want. So I can say here, pip install Jupyter. Now I already have Jupyter installed on my computer, and so all this text that's running by is saying, it's already installed, it's already installed, it's already installed, all these things are already installed. It's also possible to see this and have nothing installed, though if you have an older version installed, because pip by default will not actually overwrite old versions in favor of new versions. So if I want to make sure that I get the latest and greatest and upgrade, I can say install minus big U. And I would say if you're not using Jupyter on a regular basis, this is a good idea to do. In my particular case, there's nothing new to upgrade here. So both running uh, install minus U and install no minus big U, it's exactly the same thing. I now know that Python has installed my computer. I know that pip is working and allows me to install things. I know that Jupyter is now installed. I should now be able to just type Jupyter Notebook 
and have it start up. And if that happens, what's going on here? Well, inside of my terminal, then it's going to say I'm loading this, I'm loading this, and like this, and then I'm going to run it. I'm going to run a localhost 8888. What that means is it's, you're going to get a little web server running on your computer. It's going to be running on localhost, which is an alias for your local computer, not across the whole network. No one else can access this. And it's on port 8888. The default for web stuff is 80. This is 8888. That's fine. You don't need to be a special super user or something in order to run this. And sure enough, if I do this, this is what you're going to see. And you're going to see all the files in the current directory. You can now see this, what I've got in my current directory. If I want to create a new Jupyter Notebook document, I can say Python 3 here, new Python 3. And here we go. And I can say print hello world. If you get to the point, and by the way, I should say you can execute a cell with shift plus enter. So if you can get to the point where you can start up a Python 3 notebook page and you can go in and you can type print hello world or something similar and then shift enter and have it execute, you've gone full circle. You've now downloaded, installed, and started to run Jupyter. You've got a new notebook file here and you can also then run Python code. And now you can run whatever Python code you want to your heart's content. Now, this notebook is not just in memory, it's a file, it's a file on disk. Um, you can always tell the name, here we go, the header, it's called Untitled 5. In other words, it's going to be Untitled 5.ipynb, ipynb for ipython notebook, that's the old name for Jupyter. So I could find in my list of files, Untitled 5.ipynb. Not the most exciting of names, I will admit, but you know, we'll, we'll take what we can get. Why am I telling you this? Well, first of all, this file is going to be stored in the directory where you started running Jupyter. So if you start running in your desktop, it's going to be in your desktop file uh, folder. If you start running it somewhere that's like esoteric and weird on your computer, then those files will be stored somewhere esoteric and weird. You can find out where Jupyter thinks it's running with the magic and uh, magic percent pwd command. This will tell you what directory Jupyter is running in and where it's actually going to be saving files. So for me, it's now going to be on the desktop. Probably not the best idea as a general rule for work you want to do. You want to have a different folder for each pro project and you'll want to be using virtual environments as well to make sure that things don't conflict with one another. But this shows where the file is going to be running. Why is that useful? A, if you want to share the file, open it later on or anything like that, now you'll know where it is. B, let's say you're in one of my classes and I send you the Jupyter Notebook from that day. You then know the directory in which you need to copy, place that Jupyter Notebook file, that IPYNB file, and then you can go back to this home page of Jupyter and find, here we go, for example, you know, Python's ternary operator, right? So I can just open up that notebook. It's just in the list of files here. I open that up and sure enough, I get the uh, notebook for a previous video that I have done. So that's how you can download, install, run Jupyter. That's how you can create a new Jupyter Notebook document. And that's how you can take an existing Jupyter Notebook document and start it up on your own computer. All right? I hope this has been really helpful and allows you to install and use Jupyter. I will add that there are so many different things that can go wrong here. I'm just going to kill off Jupyter here for a moment. By the way, you can kill it off with Control C. In the terminal, you'll say shut down this notebook server. You say yes. Um, and then shut down a kernel for each of like a backend process for each of the Python processes that I was running. Um, you should note that do, you should not, not, not kill off this terminal. It's really common among my students, especially the, the Windows people who are not used to working with CMD. They're like, oh, I started Jupyter. Great. I'll just close this CMD window. Don't do that. That's where the server is running. That's where sort of the brains behind Jupyter is running. If you do that, then uh, Jupyter will complain quite a bit. The other thing is you might run into permission problems. Uh, permission problems are you know, rampant in the computer world when you're dealing with these things. Um, I don't have any great suggestions, but I can tell you that sometimes it helps to install uh, packages from pip inside of your own personal directory. That's where you say install mice, you can say minus mice user. That might make it better. I'm not convinced that's always the right thing to do, but it might make it better. Another common problem that I've seen people on Windows have is that the Py even when Python does exist, they can't get Jupyter to run as a command. Remember before I, write, I wrote Jupyter Notebook and it just ran as a command. That's because it was installed somewhere that's in my path, in the environment variable that I can use, uh, that, that, that Python uses to, or I should say actually, that the operating system uses to find different commands. So if, it, if you try running Jupyter Notebook and you're told, hey, command not found, that probably, probably means that your path is not set up correctly. Now, 
On Unix, it's usually set up correctly for this sort of thing, but on Windows, it's often not, and that's often a function of where of how you installed Python. And there's a little checkbox you can set when you install Python, saying yes, I want Python stuff to be added to my path. It's super super easy to miss, but it's there. Um, so if you find that you can't run Jupyter because it's not an acceptable command, and you have installed it, that's probably the reason why. All right, so now you know how to download, install, run, and even use Jupyter. Go for it, have fun, and if you have any questions at all, things that I can help you with, please contact me. You can get me on Twitter, you can get me via email, and don't forget that my free weekly Better Developers newsletter goes out as of uh, this recording to about 19,000 people a week, has lots of Python tips and tricks, and I'd love to share them with you as well. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.